Hello friends, today we are going to talk about how midline orientation seems to get affected in stroke and how can we help to develop this skill. Why does midline orientation really get affected? Because one side of the body becomes weaker and we tend to attend to the more stronger side because we are used to doing more activities with this side while the other hand is really not helping much. So we focus more on the stronger side. We are going to discuss today five main techniques with which midline orientation can be developed. The first technique is use of a mirror. With the help of mirror, we have two main advantages. First, it gives us a visual feedback about our posture, whether we are standing straight or we are leaning towards the weaker side or trying to pull our body towards the stronger side. Second thing, it helps us to understand the concept of balance. So if we are swaying too much while standing, it gives us a visual feedback. So essentially the mirror is meant that if our brain is not ready to perceive or allowing us to perceive our body as upright, the mirror will give a visual feedback for the same and we will be able to orient better. But what if there is a visual issue also, a visual problem also that has developed secondary to stroke? In that case, you can draw a line in the center of the mirror to give you a reference. So you have to just focus on that line rather than focusing on your entire image. So is your nose aligning with that? Is one half of your body on one side of it and the other half on the other side? That helps us to give a visual feedback. Technique number two, try to perform movements that are directed towards both sides. And we are not talking about hand movements or leg movements. Instead, we are talking about body movements. For example, doing movements which require crossing the midline. So turning head towards each side. So that we are more aware of both sides of the body. and rotating our body as well. Third aspect is performing movements in midline. For example, clasping your hands and then trying to move your arms forward in the midline and back down, which also helps to improve your shoulder range as well as getting you oriented to your midline. Even for this, a mirror feedback can be used so that you can touch the center point, the line that you had drawn before on your mirror, so you know, yes, your hands are in midline. The fourth technique requires you to be blindfolded. So you again stand in front of the mirror with that middle line drawn. Try to correct your posture as much as possible so that you are upright and then close your eyes while your legs are hip width apart. One, two, three, four, five. And when you open your eyes, you will be able to see whether your posture is still in midline or you have shifted towards one side. So in the next case, you can try to count only two, three to see for how long you can sustain that posture and keep on increasing the number of counts. And the final fifth aspect is trying to move both sides across the midline. So for example, while you are eating your food, try to keep your weaker hand on the table so that you know that this is my left hand and with the right hand I'm eating so that you always focus in the center. Similarly, if you're trying to read a book, you can try to keep your hand as a reference so that you can attend to the book from both left to right side because this hand becomes, the weaker hand becomes your anchor to understand this is where my body starts and then you will be able to align yourself in midline better. Let me know if these techniques and exercises were helpful for you by liking the video, mentioning any queries or suggestions in the comments below, ring the bell icon for notifications. Subscribe to the channel for more videos related to neurorehabilitation and we'll meet again soon. Bye.